It's happening. It's happening. We're back. We're back. <laughs> we, we didn't even miss. <laughs> we didn't. So that was proud. good. Did you miss us? <laughs> I hope so. Um, yeah, we're back after a longer than really planned hiatus. We kind of sucked. <laughs> I think, well, I mean, to be honest, I was just really burnt the fuck out and, um, like I couldn't even think about content for a podcast. <laughs> it was like, I couldn't think about content and it, so if you don't create a content, you may not understand like, and first of all, <laughs> create content. If you don't create content, <laughs> if you don't create podcasts, if you don't create content, I think it can be sometimes easy to not actually see how much work there is. And there's like a lot of executive functioning pieces that go beyond like, so it's actually like recording the podcast is the easy part. Yeah. And there's nothing that's like really necessarily hard about it. I mean, we're not like a heavily produced podcast or anything, but we are, I mean, we like, <laughs> record this and then we download it and then I make sure I put captions on it for YouTube and then I have to make a cover for YouTube and then I do the show notes and then like you then, do good show notes I and, do shit show notes <laughs> it's like you got one sentence you know listen you here know, the episode based on the show notes but it's literally a one sentence synopsis I just you know <laughs> no spoiler overachiever but there's like just like a lot of pieces. So like when you listen, I'm not saying this like for you to be like, well, just don't do it if it's so much work, but just to recognize that like creators, even people who are creating things on Instagram, there's usually like, it's not like a five minute thing to get most of these, especially if they're look good, if they're high quality, if they are, um, if there is like valuable, like tidbits of information and it's not just like a, cat video of the cat like being cute like i sometimes post but raccoons. raccoons but you know so anyways it's not that the like i i actually have a ton of ideas for content mm -hmm. it's just the same way i feel about going to the grocery store yeah it's not I got the list. It's not the grocery store that bothers me. It's the, I got to get in the car. It sounds so ridiculous. I got to go to the grocery store. I got to remember my stupid bags. And then I come home and then I have to like bring everything in. And then I got to put everything away. And I know that that sounds ridiculous, but sometimes like just like all of those multiple steps. So anyways, I, after last school year, I was really burnt out. Um, and I really wanted to just take a little mini break and plan to just throw myself back in when I got back from Greece. And then I was like, <laughs> nah, 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 I was there for it. So, and I love doing this podcast and mm -hmm. I love, like, I love it. So I didn't want it to become something that I'm like, Oh, I got to do the pun cast. Exactly. Like I don't ever yeah. want it to be like mm -hmm. that. So yeah, I guess the life lesson here is sometimes you need to take a break from the things that, typically bring you joy so that they will continue to bring you joy and not become something that is not something that you want to do. Yeah. That's a good lesson. Thanks. And that's the episode. And that's the episode. Just kidding. So if, <laughs> <laughs> um, what are we talking? Yeah, so I, I don't even know what we're talking about today. This is, um, uh, Marissa has had this, um, and I, Remember, I can't read her handwriting, which is amazing <laughs> because as a elementary and middle school teacher, I can read almost any handwriting. It makes it sound like it's because my handwriting is shitty, but it's, no, I think it's, it's so gorgeous. I think it's because it's such nice cursive writing, like cursive lettering, and it's very rare that I ever see that, especially like attractive cursive lettering. Oh. Cursive lettering. It's right. attractive. Handwriting. You it's should. Ready. Um, I am not <laughs> failed penmanship. I think that was like one of the only things I liked. Definitely didn't like math. Anyway, anyway, what are we talking about today? We're doing a diet deep dive. <laughs> um, so we're diving into, and this, I don't know, so maybe somebody has heard of it. Maybe they haven't. This was a, a news to me. And I heard about this diet because randomly I knew like a handful of people that were doing it just like out of nowhere. I don't and That's how it always happens. Yeah. And I hadn't heard about it anywhere else. So it's called the Cairo Thin Diet. 
Cairo. Yes. Um, so like, like Cairo, Cairo Egypt? Cairo oh. developed. Because, you know, like nobody loves to get out of their lane like a chiropractor does. So interesting. Yeah. And we'll do, we'll, at some point we will do an episode on. I think. Like that's got to um, I mean, to be, I do know some chiropractors who are ethical. Yeah. So let's do hashtag not all chiropractors. Not all, like, we'll just put that right <laughs> out there. But um, yeah, so this was um, a diet developed by chiropractors. It's advertised as a, quote, doctor supervised diet. But it's not clear to me, like, how supervised it is, right? So on their website, you can only purchase the Chirothin diet kit if you are a chiropractor or like medical doctor. So like okay. you have to register your account. They have to verify that you are in fact a medical professional or a chiropractor. And then you can buy their kits to resell to your patients with this diet. Okay. Um, the kit comes with the manual, which literally spells out exactly what to do. Day by day, oh, that's week good. by week. Because I'm pretty sure chiropractors aren't nutritionists, right? right. They're not dietitians. They're not. Okay. Nope, they're not. Okay. Um, and actually, um, most medical doctors don't have very much in the way of nutritional training. That, yeah, I didn't think that. Are chiropractors back? medical doctors? No. What is what is their lettering? Um, I believe it's a doctor of chiropractory. So I think it's just DOC. Chiro. So literally, doc. <laughs> I don't think. So. <laughs> Well, they they didn't go to med school for the most okay. part. I'm sure okay. Not. There are probably some who did, but most chiropractors have not gone to med school. Okay. And they definitely have not gone to dietitian school. Okay. Um, so it, it's kind of questionable, like how how supervised it is, because the manual does spell out pretty much everything for you. Um, and I mean, there's really nothing to like stop somebody from like, oh, I'm a doctor, I'm gonna buy a bunch of these, fucking sell them to my patients, make a ton of money, and like they're on their own. Um, so it's kind of, I don't know. I got questions about exactly how supervised it is. And this is a diet that should 100% be supervised by a medical professional, a trained licensed medical professional, mm -hmm. preferably with a, well, I don't think any dietitian in their right mind would prescribe something like this to be totally honest. So let me guess yeah. it is under 800 calories a day. It's about depending on the person it's eight to a thousand calories a day. That so makes me very so hungry. I know, right? My stomach just like growled. Um, that makes me so hungry. I eat, for reference, I eat about 800 calories by 11 a.m. every day. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be screwed. I'd be like, oh, well, shit, I just used my whole day. <laughs> um, so it's, some of this is going to seem like Tail as old as time. Like a lot of this is very, it's recycled shit that we see with a lot of diets. Like I, I definitely got echoes of Optavia as I was reviewing yeah. this. Um, because one of the big problems we have with that diet is that it is oftentimes under 800 cal yeah. and it is not medically supervised. No. And it is 110% a starvation diet. Like, like you are going to get malnutrition like pretty unequivocally. It's sad. Yeah. It's, I actually know somebody who, um, nope, never mind. I'm going to tell this story. Uh, okay. I'm like, <laughs> lawsuits. No. Okay. <laughs> never mind. I'll tell you offline. Okay. Okay. So there are three phases to the kind diet. The first phase is called the loading phase. I don't want to keep reading my notes, but, um, and it's a two day phase. So I don't know if you call it a phase, but they call it a phase two days. And your goal is to eat as much as humanly possible. In those two days, they're saying a minimum of 5,000 calories each day for two days. Uh, um, and they said, so you're last mealing it for two literally, days. Literally. Yeah. Right. Like diet starts on Monday, mm. last supper, let's just inhale as much as possible. So already we're establishing this really toxic diet habit, right? Yeah, of that binge restrict. Binge restrict, binge, right? So we're like right off the bat, we're enforcing that binge restrict cycle. Um, they say ideally high fat foods. Um, and you are also supp supposed to take these drops during the loading phase and during the losing phase. So these drops, you just take seven drops three times a day and there's not a lot of info on them. So they hide like from like a, like a tincture, like, like a yeah, like a, <laughs> like a baby bird, just like that. So we, like, this is like, is it supposed to have like nutrients in it? Is this supposed to be like. I mean, so like, like your vitamin drop. 
No. Like a multivitamin or something. So they hide a lot behind it's a proprietary blend. Ugh. But what I've been able to surmise is it's a proprietary blend of amino acids okay. and B12, basically. That's pretty much it. It's not a multivitamin. They do, of course, have a multivitamin they sell. Of and course. And that's the one they recommend okay. that you take with this to avoid malnutrition. Um, so you're supposed mm -hmm. to take these drops and basically... What they advertise these drops as is they're supposed to, quote, provide nutritional support, and they allege that they also will increase your metabolism, right? So when you're eating very low calorie like this, i.e. starving yourself, your metabolism naturally slows down to keep you alive. And so allegedly taking these drops will help prevent that from happening or like mitigate it um, and will also supposedly make sure you don't feel hungry. Um, it must be the B12. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. But... <laughs> I don't want anybody pulling that quote. Yeah, right. Michelle said that B12, B12 will keep you from getting hungry. And everyone's taking B12. <laughs> um, so you're supposed to graze all day long, mostly high fat foods, eat as much as you possibly can. Um, and you're supposed to take these drops. So like my guess is like with these drops, and I wrote this down, my guess, colon, right? So supplementing with colon so like a colon like your colon no like the punctuation oh you made a colon yeah my okay. guess colon is um like you can supplement with amino acids and that has been shown to potentially help decrease muscle loss during low calorie intake so maybe their thought is like muscle it, the more muscle you have, the higher your metabolism is. So if we give them these amino acid supplements to take, that will help diminish their muscle loss during this period in which we're starving them so they won't lose as much metabolic function and then basically kind of mitigate starvation mode from happening. So I think that's the rationale behind the drops. But we have this question of what is actually in them, and they haven't been independently tested. Like there's no third-party testing. There's no peer-reviewed studies of these drops and whether or not they're actually effective for this. So who, who is the company? Who, who <laughs> <laughs> is the company that creates this diet mm -hmm. called Cairo thin? They're called Cairoceuticals. <laughs> okay. <'cause... laughs> that up. Um, but do we know who like the, like usually there is like another like Procter and Gamble or like, that I don't know. Somebody else behind that. Just wondering. Okay, but anyway, sorry. But yeah, so there's the drops, and they describe the loading phase as the most enjoyable part of the diet. No shit. Everyone I know who has done this has been like, it's fucking miserable because you're just gorging yourself beyond, like, you're full and you're still forcing yourself to eat. And you're trying to get as many Ugh. calories as possible. So you're eating like bacon and you're putting butter on everything and you're eating until you feel sick because you're required to. They were just like, no, the first two days sucked. They were like, I was grateful for the losing phase by day I one. guess I wonder if that's part of it is to like be Maybe like, see, food? you don't really like food. Maybe. Yeah. This is what you were eating like before something sick. And there is like when you go through the manual and you go through their website, it is just packed full of really, really toxic, harmful diet language. Like it's so much like blaming the individual. And like, if you are overweight, you are unhealthy, like uh, referencing BMI, like, um, you know, being underweight is just as unhealthy as being in the overweight category. And it's like, you are literally ignoring mountains of scientific studies that show that folks that fall in the overweight BMI category in general have better health indicators mm -hmm. than people in the normal BMI category and definitely better than folks in the underweight BMI category. So they're, they're just continuing to rely on junk science mm -hmm. basically to push this diet. Um, so that's phase one. Okay. So you load. You load. Then you Two lose. days. Yep. Two and days then of you loading. Lose. Then 40 days of losing. I don't know why 40. Um, so it's biblical, yeah, you're gonna lose in biblical proportions <laughs> 40 days and 40 nights of losing, <laughs> and on the third day, you'll rise again. <laughs> <laughs> on the 41st day, you you'll, will, you'll load again. <laughs> so, <laughs> here's the thing with the losing phase it does not matter your biological sex, it does not matter your age, it does not matter your body size. You're getting the same plan. Okay. Like, 
I will be getting the same plan as a six foot five, 300 pound man, like doesn't matter. So you're not allowed to eat breakfast. So there's fasting involved. No oh, okay. breakfast. Uh, you can have liquids at breakfast, but they have to be zero calorie liquids. So they were like, if you do coffee, it has to be black coffee or a zero calorie creamer or stevia. Okay. So no calories, no breakfast. At lunch, you are allowed to have four ounces of their approved lean proteins, right? So like chicken. Oh, okay. I just want to say this. Four mm -hmm. ounces of meat is like really not a it's big meat. serving. It's not a lot. I eat more than four ounces of meat every meal. Like I'd say a more average would be six. Yeah. And satisfying, right? Yeah. Like four, like if you've ever weighed and measured out four ounces of it's like, like a chicken breast or a chicken thigh or whatever, it's like, it's sad. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't, I mean, and it might be enough for some people, fair enough. Yeah. But it's interesting to me that four ounces is always this, like, even if you look at like a package of meat. Oh yeah. Four ounces. It's always like four ounces is always the standard measure. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah. And but quite frankly, it's not typically very satisfying. No, I could definitely. I, I do eat more than that. Yeah. So you can have that. And then you can have four ounces of their approved non-starchy vegetables. So in the manual, there is a whole list of can haves and can't haves. Of course. Of course. Um, so I, I did the math. I mean, it's rough math, but Right. So four ounces of the lean protein is going to bring you to somewhere around like in the ballpark of like 450 calories ish, mm -hmm. like give or take. Um, and I rounded a little bit there. And then I used green beans as an example for four ounces of a non-starchy vegetable. And that's about 36 calories. So for your lunch, you're consuming less than 500 calories, we can safely say. And then it's the same exact thing for dinner. So assuming you are hitting the 500 calorie mark, which you probably are not, a thousand calories a day, max. Yeah, because I'd say like four ounces of like chicken breast is more like 200 calories. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yep. So there's that. And then um, you can have four ounces of fresh fruit if you want to have fruit. It can't be like dried fruit. And if you really need to have bread, you can have a slice of Melba toast, which I don't know. Like what. a little Melba toast? <laughs> No, like the, the, the ones like this. Like, Wait, there's ever, real size like Melba it's toast? It's like this long. It's still skinny. Have you ever had a Melba toast? Too? Have, listeners, have you ever had a friggin' Melba toast? Yeah, they're like these tiny little crunchy Those toast. are Melba snacks. Yeah, they're good though. Yeah. They're dry we can only have hell. one of them? You can have one. <laughs> one Melba toast. <laughs> and your Melba's going to be so dry afterwards. Um, so that's the same. So like we're looking like somewhere in like the thousand calorie range at best. Okay. Um, couple like weird parts that I noticed. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, literally, this is a direct quote from the manual during the losing phase, avoid dairy at all costs. No reason why. Just avoid dairy at all costs. No reason. No reason given, just at all costs. I'm like, oh my God, it's Because die. you just like gorged yourself on fats during the loading phase. You be. now have enough fat in your body to last you 40 days. Well, yeah. And that's the goal, right? You don't want it because you want to be burning fat. So they don't want you consuming dietary fat. Um, and you're not allowed to use body lotion. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, is it going to make that much of a difference if you're absorbing lotion through your skin? Yeah, you're not allowed to use lotion. That sounds like a weird chiropractor. Thing. Oh yeah, that's like a net, net, like yeah, brushing yourself. Yeah, yeah, you can't. Which I know lotion. people that brush themselves. If you like it and you dig it, like good. But like, I don't think there's a lot of scientific evidence for that. But that's like a very chiropractor y type. Oh yeah, like definitely. Um, and you can only use mineral makeup. Oh, because it's probably non-toxic, right? I assume. They don't, again, there's no ex explanation. And I given. wonder if the lotion thing is because of the, like, toxicity Toxic. that you might, like. Maybe. But it's surprising to me they don't, like, give you, like, an approved list of. They do. So there are two brands. Uh, gonna, like, so that's, that here. must yeah. be what it is. Yeah. Like, they were like, you can use Carmex for chapstick, but you can't use any other chapsticks. No Burt's Bees? No. Sorry. Not, not Cairo with an approved. <laughs> yeah. So no lotion, mineral makeup only, but like mascara and stuff is fine. Have at it with mascara. Um, really, really weird. Um, you do have to weigh yourself every single day. Okay. Which like I got feelings about. Stifle Stay tuned. Feelings. We're going to push down our feelings on that. I'm used to it. Um, and then obviously because you're not eating anywhere near enough, 
uh, no or very light exercise during the losing. Right. Weeks. And like, we, I think we've talked about this before, I think during the Optavia episode, and then I've mentioned there was a, an MLM that I was briefly and unfortunately involved with that ran a similar program. If they tell you, you cannot exercise, that's a huge red flag. Like that right up front tells you, you are starving yourself. Your body is made to move and it needs to move. And so if you were being advised against intentional movement because you're not eating enough, you should be a little nervous at least. <laughs> like, so we know that physical activity, either through walking and or some sort of high intensity interval training, strength training mm -hmm. has incredible health promoting benefits. Yeah. So my problem is, is when we are then saying do this diet to lose weight for your health. Yep. And it's like under the guise of health. And I'm like, if you want to lose weight and you want to change your body, like the, I no shame in that. Right. And I think that it is acceptable for folks to want to do that. Not that anybody needs my acceptance of it. <laughs> but when we are saying like, there's this diet, it's, you have to lose weight. Yeah for your health, but you can't exercise, which we know is so, so important, especially for women, especially for women who are developing and going through the menopause transition, because you need to be lifting weight for your bones health. You need to be maintaining and building lean muscle mass so that you don't continuously lose muscle mass as you get older. We lose muscle as we get older. And that's when you ask for falls. The biggest killer of women, I'm pretty, I'm 99.8% positive on this, is heart disease. Yeah. Is heart disease. So we're now saying don't do any of these health promoting activities that are actually going to benefit you well, so you can lose weight for quote unquote health. Yeah. And I just, this, this is where I have a problem. Yeah. The, this is yeah. the problem I have is that like, you want to lose weight? Great. Stop saying that a super restrictive diet that is not promoting health, promoting habits and behaviors yeah. is what's healthy. Yeah. And that's where the whole argument of like, well, I'm concerned about your health always falls apart when it comes to talking to somebody about losing weight. And that's where it's like, no, your fat phobia is shown. Mm -hmm. We see this time again, and it's been coming to the forefront a lot with the conversations around Ozempic and Wagobi and all of those drugs where all of these horrible side effects are now coming out and this permanent damage being mm -hmm. done. And it's like, well, I, I told you to go on it because I'm concerned about your health. Well, no, if you were concerned about their health, wouldn't you be more concerned about like, you know, the, these side effects that they could be experiencing both mentally and physically? I mean, yeah. there have been both that have been reported. So or doing, yeah. you know, so often folks go to the doctor and it's like, so you need to lose weight. Yeah. But then there's no like additional guidance as to like, let me set you up with a dietitian that works with us so they can help guide you on healthy behavior habits with food, with, you know, building those foundational yeah. habits. There is no like, let me hook you up with a physical therapist or a personal trainer. Yeah. You know, like so that you can get some good quality movement in and learn how to move and feel encouraged to move and feel safe to move. And most of these doctors that are lazily prescribing weight loss to people are also not out there advocating for the changes systemically that we need to provide improved yeah. access to care, yeah. improved access to safe spaces for movement and improved food access. Yeah. Social so services. it's just yeah. super lazy doctoring. It is. It absolutely is. Like weight loss is not a behavior. Your body weight is not a behavior and weight loss is not a health promoting behavior by definition. It's if you were really concerned about people's health, you'd be advocating for the systems that mm -hmm. have been shown to improve their health. People don't that have to work three jobs to feed their kids don't have the, the time or the energy to be joining a gym and working out. Why don't we do something about minimum wage? Yep. Why don't we do something about how unaffordable childcare is? Why don't we do something about how expensive it is to buy food these days? That is really what is going to impact people's health and well-being exactly. instead of like, let's pay. 500 plus dollars on the fucking Cairo thin diet so that you can wait cycle for the rest of your life on it. 
So how long are you supposed – like you can just keep doing this cycle? Wait, so, did you say there were three phases? There's three phases. We've oh, because there's phase. probably some sort of maintenance phase, which never – no right. one every, ever fucking gets to. Right. So this, like you kind of forced to because it's 40 days. So then you get maintenance. But they call it the maintenance slash cycling phase. And I don't know about you, but as soon as I see cycling, that's another red flag for yep. me because like that's what it is, diet cycling. You lose, you regain. You lose, you regain. And every time you regain a little bit more because you're doing more and more like metabolic stuff, you know, to your body. So you have your maintenance slash cycling phase and they insist that after 40 days, you have to go into maintenance. And I think this is because they know how dangerous it is to be eating this low calorie and risking malnutrition for any extended period of time. So one of the FAQs that I found in the handbook was, will you skip your period? Mm. while on Cairo thin. And they're like, nope, you absolutely will experience this. Nope, will experience no changes to your menstrual cycle. And I think the only reason why they can say that is because they don't keep you in the losing phase long enough. But if you stayed in it for more than those 40 days, you can bet your ass you would skip your period because your body just would not be able to sustain that process Mm -hmm. on top of keeping you alive. Um, So during the maintenance and cycling phase, you weigh yourself every single day. And they claim that at three to five weeks, you'll notice that your weight is finally stabilized. Okay. (laughs) During this phase, so you do increase your calorie intake to your BMR. That's it. Okay. So for folks that don't know what that is, your basal metabolic rate, it's what your metabolic rate is if you're not moving. Basically, if you just... Like when you're sleeping. Yeah. Like if you're just laying in bed doing nothing, that's your basal, basal metabolic rate. Um, on days where you exercise, you are told you should eat more, um, because obviously you're going to be burning more calories if you're moving around. Um, they actually provide the equation for calculating your own BMR. So again, there's this question of like, how supervised are you actually Mm. being by a doctor? If they're literally like, this is your BMR calculation. Um, they did ballpark that for most women, you're going to be looking at 1100 to 1400 calories a day, which again is way too friggin' low. For most women. For most women. And we've talked about like a a male toddler eats 1,400 calories a day as a point of reference, generally. It's all those chicken nugs. Those nuggies. Mm -hmm. And then for men, we're looking generally between 1,500 and 1,800, which again is extremely low. And remember like basal metabolic rate, that is, as I said, you're like just sleeping, right? You're in bed. So any other activity beyond that, you're burning more calories than that. So cleaning your house, doing the groceries, taking the kids to school, walking up and down the stairs to get to your office and back downstairs again, all of that, that's increased calorie burn. It's not taking into account any of your acti- activities of daily living. Um, so it's that's kind of the part of it. You don't do drops anymore. You're done with the drops. Um, <laughs> and then your doctor may advise additional rounds of the losing phase. So this is where the cycling comes in. Like, okay, we got to take you off of it just so you don't die or develop any like nutritional deficiencies that can cause damage. And then we'll bring you back. So I do think it's interesting because most diets, like Mm -hmm. if you think about like South Beach diet or the Atkins diet, Mm -hmm. there's usually like a pre-phase, a losing phase, and then some sort of maintenance phase. But the maintenance phase doesn't come until you've like hit the goal mark for the amount yeah. of weight you want to lose it for a certain amount of time. Yeah. yeah. Because well, I can tell you that on any of those diets and I've been on them all, I never made it to the maintenance phase mm-hmm. because I've always at some point been, I've always then ended up binging and then saying, fuck it. And yeah. then looking for the next magical thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's like so many of those diets with their marketing, most of what they're showing you is from that maintenance phase of like, oh, look at how much food you're eating. Look right. at this beautiful, like, da, da, da. and it's like, but that's after you get to a certain point. Right. That's not um, the actual, like, definite part of the So it is interesting. I wonder if that, what is it? The Medifast that, that's on TV. TV yeah. Is that the same as like HMR? I don't know what HMR is. Is that the medical, is that one of the oh, medical wow. ones? I'm gonna have to look, but anyways, I like I'm all I'm pretty sure that that's like another maybe I'm, many weight loss. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, but I'm pretty like, sure most cool. people who are on that diet, it's under 800 calories, and I'm not sure they cycle you on and off. I don't know, I but that's actually medically supervised. Right, they're doing your blood work and they're also giving you nutritional supplements. Yeah. Whereas this, that's optional. Here, uh, drink this bone broth. Yeah. Mm. So. 
I pulled some like quotes that I thought were really mm-hmm. interesting. Um, the first is uh, directly from the manual. Why do so many dieters fail? It's simple. Dot mm. dot dot. Unrealistic goals. And I, like the I <laughs> the irony of that. I'm like, you know what's unrealistic? Thinking you can friggin' stick to this diet for any extended period of time. Thinking that you're gonna have lasting weight loss from a diet that is this restrictive. I mean. Even the maintenance phase is an extremely restrictive diet. So yeah. like if anyone's ever dieted before who's listening, you can only stay in that state of restriction for so long. Your body is fighting against it. Your mind is fighting against it. We as human beings do not respond well to deprivation. And when we're depriving ourselves to this level, we're depriving our body of basics that it needs. So like, I just, I just thought it was super funny. That's like unrealistic goals. And it's like, everything about this is fucking unrealistic. Yeah. Like, am I wrong? (laughs) Well, I'm even thinking about, so back, like kind of swinging back to what we were just talking about, like building and maintaining lean muscle mass, you need protein to be able to do that. And if you're only eating eight ounces of protein a day, yeah, that's how many grams of protein. Um, Hey, Siri. Hey, math. How many grams of protein are in eight ounces? Oh, it's playing music. Hey, Siri. (laughs) How many grams are in eight ounces? Of what? 226.8 grams. But how many? Yeah. Yeah. That's not right. That's what Siri said. Eight ounces is 226.8 grams. There's not, you're not getting... You eat eight ounces of meat and you're getting 226 grams of protein? Just 20 of meat. (laughs) (laughs) This isn't right. When was the last time you ate 220 grams of protein in a day, Marissa? Siri, you lie. (laughs) No, Marissa, you asked a bad question. (laughs) (laughs) I gotta do the math I did earlier. It's probably about 60. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. Yes, because... How many grams are in an ounce, Siri? No, you don't know how many grams of protein are in an ounce of chicken breast. You're you're missing the Stop. of protein. How many oh, grams of protein? <laughs> no. Don't need to convert ounces to grams first because you got to do like no. measurements. I know how many grams of pro- wait. We so have funny. lost our damn minds. Math teacher. How Fix many this. grams <laughs> of protein in eight ounces of meat? Just any meat. About 50 grams. Uh, okay. On average, an eight ounce steak has around 50 grams of protein. Okay. So that's a good reference point. Do you understand what you were asking wrong? I don't even understand the equation. <laughs> There's no equation. I think there is. <laughs> And I think I put X and Y in the wrong spots. God, I'm terrible at math. But like, anyway, I'm so glad this wasn't a test. Fucking fail. You know why? It's you know why you couldn't do this right is because you have forty seven thousand four hundred thirty eight emails alerted on your phone. <laughs> Gross. I am a Get mess. rid of all I of these know. alerts. Cheaper. I don't know. <laughs> my life, my mind is chaos. So if you're eating 50 grams of protein a day. So you are not probably even maintaining lean no. muscle mass, which is really bad mm-hmm. if you are getting older and we're yeah. all getting older. So like, I like to just like put a, like a point of comparison, like for perspective, <laughs> because people don't think in grams. Obviously I don't. <laughs> I eat 160 grams of protein a day. (laughs) I mean, I try to hit that and I usually am more around 130. Yeah. It's hard to hit that much, but like as a point where like, that's how much we're eating. Yep. And for it to be giving you like, that just shows how little protein that is. Like I'm five foot four and I eat 160 grams of protein. The recommended like basement level is, is, I believe, 80 for most people. Yeah. So you're below the basement. You're sub basement. Or it's like you're at the, it's like barely the basement. Yeah. You're like, um, they that also said that this diet helps dieters break their old bad habits. But there is no part of this program that involves habit, cold, habit coaching whatsoever. 
It's literally like follow this, eat, do this, don't do that, eat this, don't eat that. There's no habit coaching whatsoever. And if anything, I feel like this is enforcing really bad habits, like yeah. diet cycling. So I thought that was funny too. Uh, I also thought this was really funny. So I found a review of this diet on Noom.com. Oh. <laughs> and Noom wrote a negative review. Noom wrote yeah. a negative review. So you can imagine how bad this must be if Noom is like, mm -mm, nah, it's bad news. Yeah. Well, because you know, Noom now has a, like, a, not a, um, you know, we'll go V. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for some, for a company that says they're not a diet. Is it like Noom go V? It's it is. It's something no, like that. that. <laughs> if you haven't listened to our Michelle Goes Undercover with Noom episode, make sure you go back and listen to that. It's but crazy. the update is that they now have like a special plan to go along with Wagovi, which caveat, one of our biggest criticisms of the weight loss, any sort of weight loss pill or shot or anything like that is that you're not developing habits that are going to support you if you happen to stop taking said X, Y, and Z, yep. right? Yeah. So I suppose we could look at this as a not so evil thing where Noom is now coming in to help people who are on Wagovi actually implement better habits for longer, like for real health. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Did this was a crossover episode? <laughs> No, I'm just saying like, <laughs> so one of our biggest criticisms yeah. of that is that they're not, you're in like this yeah. diet, they, we're not, this is worse. Like we're not working on foundational. Yeah. This is worse. Fits. But I'm not, I'm not jumping on the noom train. I'm not jumping no. on the noom I train know. either. I know, but I get what you're saying. Noom, like, noom. <laughs> <laughs> noom, noom. noom. <laughs> okay. I'm, I don't want that. Well, I was going to choose you. And then I was like, maybe that sounds like I want to jump on the train. So then I tried to be a sad train. Listen, school's back in session. I lose a little bit more brain power every day, every day. Every day. Oh God. Um, all right. What's your last funny thing? That was all the funny stuff I had. Great. I, there was one claim that I forgot to mention that like, it, no. So when you get to the end of the book, they start to like try to explain things and it's not done well. Um, but basically by following their diet, right, which essentially you're cutting back on carbs, you're eating very low calorie and you're loading up on fat beforehand. Um, so they're alleging that by doing those things and using their drops, it allows your body to more easily perform fatty acid transportation and metabolism oh. so that you can avoid metabolic slowdown and burn more fat. For energy. Is that science? No. Okay. <laughs> like that's, I'm like, literally like if this was the answer, wouldn't every diet be doing yes. this? Wouldn't everybody be doing that? If we've had the way to figure out how to make your body burn fat specifically, like the fact of the matter is, I mean, burning fat for energy, AKA ketosis is a survival mechanism. It is not something that our body does well or efficiently. And it is a mechanism of like last resort, mm -hmm. like not last, last resort. That's using protein for energy, but it's not something where it's not a state we're supposed to be in for long periods right. of time. And I just don't see how this can be possibly backed by any good science that, oh, we, we figured out the secret to making it easier for your body to burn fat for energy. Yeah. You know why you're losing weight? Because you're only eating 800 calories a day. Yeah. That's yeah. why you're losing weight. It's not magic. It's right. not that yeah. because you're not eating before noon. It's not that you are transporting fatty lipids more efficiently. It's because you're not eating enough. Yeah. It's literally <laughs> when your body does not have enough readily available fuel, the next step is to burn its fat stores. It's not, it's not like they've unlocked some secret. It's literally your body trying to keep you alive. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I don't endorse this diet. No. I also do not endorse Noom. No, we are not on the Noom train. <laughs> <laughs> so if it does sound like I was a little sympathetic there, you know, I'm always trying I to- I was questioning. Listen, I'm always trying to find the like other side of yeah, things. Yeah, you're good at that. I'm, I'm just like trying. Yeah. And especially for like, I do sympathize or I guess sympathize. Like people don't want my pity. I empathize, empathize, like with the desire to lose weight and the yeah. desire to find the thing that is going to work this time, especially 
for somebody who lives in a stigmatized body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And like, I don't want somebody who lives in a larger body and is sick and tired of people treating them like shit because they're in a bigger body and mm -hmm. they're finding a way to eliminate that stigma for mm -hmm. themselves to right because of the world we live in yeah and i just hope that for that those folks are able to get the well-rounded support that they deserve to have yeah instead of just like here go i'm pretty sure you just like shoot yourself in the butt with it right is that how you do a goby i have never done it i don't know is it in the butt i don't know <laughs> hey siri <laughs> hey siri is it in the butt <laughs> My dog's face is so disappointed. <laughs> <in> like, <laughs> Anyways, you're shooting yourself up with, you know, whatever it is that's supposed to be for helping people with diabetes. Yeah. I, you know, I like that you said the well rounded help that they deserve rather than the well rounded help that they need. Yep. I feel like people use that, oh, the help that you need. And it's like, who are you to say what somebody else yeah, needs? So it's really infantilizing. You, yeah. I appreciate that you, you, had that turn of phrase and i think that like loops back to that like lazy doctor yeah like, which and also doctors don't i mean you would think that we also put doctors up on a pedestal right that they're supposed to like be the end all be all of all the things and they are not necessarily appropriately trained and unfortunately in the united states anyways insurance companies run healthcare and insurance companies oftentimes are the ones that are like you need to take this person's bmi and you need to report it to us so that we can pay you yeah so there is all of these systems that are in place and we're all being impacted by it yeah so yeah and um, let's not forget i mean bmi became a thing because of life insurance companies so mm -hmm. it all comes back to the insurance companies i mean they just jumped on the eugenics idea of ideal body shape mm -hmm. the ideal man thanks eugenics yeah seems never mind yeah never mind all right so <laughs> anyways we um do not encourage you to do the cairo thin diet um we are excited to be back <laughs> we hope you're excited for us to be back we would love to hear from you if there are any topics that you would love um like i said earlier i've made a whole list of content especially particularly for mini sods like really bite-sized little nuggets um dino nuggets i love dino me nuggets. too they're the best they definitely taste better than regular they nuggets. do there's something maybe they're made of dinos maybe they're made of dinos. Maybe that's what it is yeah, taste yeah, black good. market dinos yeah. yeah yeah um but anyways so if you have questions about fitness about nutrition about wellness things that you would like marissa and uh and or i to answer either in episodes together or in minisodes please send them to us at strong and simple podcast at gmail.com find us on instagram you can send us a dm there um so that we make sure that we're creating the content that you know we want to create but also that is helpful to you that is entertaining to you that you know you want to listen to um and tune into mm -hmm. so yeah that's that <laughs> yeah Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for listening, y'all. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was no. Scary. Oh, hold on.